In today's video, we've got a lot of news to go over. We talked a little while ago about the possibility about a PlayStation Game Pass, and now more rumors are circulating about that, but it might be a little bit disappointing in terms of what we are getting versus what we were expecting. Sega has announced the release date for one of the more anticipated JRPGs of the year in Valkyria Chronicles 4. We've got more details on Marvel's Spider-Man gameplay, and we have a little bit of details on Cyberpunk 2077 as well. First, one of the killer apps on Microsoft's console in the the Xbox One is definitely Game Pass. It's just a great service, $10 a month, and it gets you a slew of games, and especially now you get every first-party Microsoft title. It is an exceptional value, so if PlayStation could replicate something similar, that would be excellent as well. And hearing that PlayStation now will be offering downloads makes you think of something in that direction. Now, for those of you that don't know, PlayStation now is a game streaming service. It does not offer downloads as of this moment. It's $20 a month, and it gives you an access to a gigantic catalog of games from PlayStation. PlayStation 3 titles, PS4 titles, and I believe there's a couple of PS2 titles in there as well. Unfortunately, considering everybody does not have a top tier internet connection, it does not offer the best gaming experience possible, especially if you're playing a faster paced first person shooter. PlayStation Now for a lot of people just isn't the route to go. Even for someone like me that does have a really good internet connection and is on a wired connection, I even noticed some issues. However, we've been hearing that PlayStation Now might be offering downloads later this year, and another source has confirmed that to Kotaku UK. The functionality is due to roll out in late September this year, but the caveat is that it'll be limited to just PlayStation 4 games at least initially. Now that's still great, being able to download all of the PS4 offerings on PlayStation Now still gives you a lot of games to choose from, however I think the biggest incentive would have been to download various PlayStation 3 games because of course the PlayStation 4 does not have backwards compatibility. Now I feel like the long term game should be to somehow get PlayStation 3 games working on the PlayStation 4, I don't know if they could do it. I don't know if it's something you could only do on the PS4 Pro. Whatever the case may be, that would be a true killer app for PlayStation Now. And I think it's become apparent that the world is not ready for a game streaming service. We're ready for a subscription style service, but only if it lets you download the games. Look at the success with Game Pass. If Sony could replicate that and put out something similar, I think that would be the best. And if you can still offer that streaming service, that would make PlayStation Now a very compelling service if it offered you to stream the games if you want. That way, you don't have to wait for the games to download, or you also also have the option to download the game, I think that would make an excellent subscription service and may even justify the relatively high asking cost of $20 a month. But time will tell on that, we didn't hear about that at E3, this could be an announcement we hear at Gamescom however. Moving right along, one of the more anticipated JRPGs for the rest of this year has to be Valkyria Chronicles 4, possibly the most anticipated considering Kingdom Hearts 3 has been pushed out of this year, and Sega has put out a tweet announcing the game's release date. Quote, report for duty soldiers, our mission begins September 25th, starting today, pre-order the Valkyria Chronicles 4 launch edition and receive a controller skin featuring the adorable medic dog Ragnarok. Coming soon to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. So September 25th is the date for Valkyria Chronicles 4, honestly, that's a little bit earlier than I expected. I figured this would see like a November release date, but I guess it's good that it's being released before the gigantic wave of games in October and November. Still, September's looking like a pretty packed month with Dragon Quest XI, another pretty big JRPG. We've got Marvel Spider-Man, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and now we have Valkyria Chronicles 4 as well. I was a big fan of the very first Valkyria Chronicles game to the point where I played the sequel, and I actually played the translated version of Valkyria Chronicles 3 as well. Those are some fantastic games, and I expect Valkyria Chronicles 4 to be just as good, so make sure this one is on your radar for the September 25th release. And if you've yet to check out Valkyria Chronicles, make sure you check out the remastered edition that's available on the PlayStation 4. That is a great version of the game. Impossible. We get through it. Peace is a beautiful thing, but it's fragile. And once it's broken, it can never be made whole again. Just say the word, boss. I'm locked, loaded, and in freaking invincible. Raz is coming through! If we don't do something, the tragedy will never stop. We have to believe in our goal and keep moving. We will rise again, fight for our fallen brethren, and overcome the Imperial Army. We've got heavy blood loss from the femoral artery and severe burns on his right upper arm. You're safe now. Hang in there! We will live to see Hoffen again. We will. Together.
Moving on from that, we've got more gameplay details about Marvel Spider-Man. After you complete the game, you will obviously be able to explore the open world that the game has to offer, but you can also change the time of day and the weather effects after finishing the story. During the game's main campaign, it's all set by the story, but after you beat the campaign, there are certain things you can set, which will also help with the game's photo mode, so that is a pretty cool addition that you can change the time and the weather effects so you can take the best photos possible with the photo mode. And the game itself takes place during multiple weeks through October and November. Of course, Marvel's Spider-Man is almost here, just a little while longer, less than three months away, and it'll be released on September 7th, another big September game. Everyone just quietly go back into your cells and lock the door behind you, okay? Please? Speaking of gameplay details, I also have some on Cyberpunk 2077. While we didn't see any new footage of the game at E3, there was a gigantic behind closed door demo that's said to have run from 45 to 50 minutes. In a response to a fan asking if there would be loading screens when players travel to different areas, it was confirmed that there would be no loading screens at all, with the quote, no loading screens after the initial load into the game. The more I hear about Cyberpunk 2077, the more I'm starting to realize that this is an incredibly ambitious game, and unless it was CD Projekt Red, I would honestly think half the stuff that I'm hearing is not gonna pan out with the final release, but considering what we saw with The Witcher 3, considering how talented of a studio CD Projekt Red is, I think they are the only studio that's capable of putting out something like Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, there are studios in Sony's first party that are incredibly talented, but a game of this size, scope, and ambition, I really think CD Projekt Red is the only studio that's capable of something like this, and just the gigantic open world game like this with no loading screens, that is pretty awesome. Of course, we've heard a lot more about Cyberpunk 2077, the fact that it's going to be a first person game, the fact that you're going to be able to create your own character, and hopefully at some point we actually see that behind closed doors press demo. Usually that is the case whenever they show a demo behind closed doors at some point that is made available to see by the public and if it was a 45 to 50 minute demo that is something i'm sure a lot of gamers want to see maybe we'll see it at gamescom of this year this city's always got a promise for you might be a lie an illusion but it's there just around the corner and it keeps you going It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. And that's gonna conclude this video. Let us know your thoughts on everything. What do you think about the possibility of PlayStation Now offering downloads? What do you think about it just being limited to PS4 games for now? Would you like to see it open up to PS3 games? Of course, then we have to work around the backwards compatibility thing, but I really think if Sony can somehow manage that, that would be a gigantic coup for them and would really put them head and shoulders above Microsoft as backwards compatibility is one of the main things they have. And then offering a subscription service like this, the potential is really limitless. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is scheduled for a release on September 25th. If you pre-order the game, you do get some cool controller skins, so maybe that's something to do. And if you've yet to check out Valkyria Chronicles, like I said, Valkyria Chronicles Remastered, a great way to start. Marvel Spider-Man will allow you to change the time of day and weather after finishing the story. However, when you're playing through the story mode, that will be set. But after that is yours to tune to your liking, and that'll help out with the photo mode. Cyberpunk 2077 will feature no loading screens after its first load screen. That is pretty awesome for a giant open world game like this. That's gonna wrap this one up guys sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye